Moby Dick. We're going to be reading an excerpt from the novel um, by Herman Melville. Now, this is a story of a man who is um, it's set obsessed with this dangerous, mysterious white whale that had taken off his leg um, a few years before. The man, Captain Ahab, guides the Pequod, a whaling ship, and its crew in relentless pursuit of the whale Moby Dick. Among the more important members of the crew are Starbuck, the first mate, Stubb, the second mate, Flask, the third mate, uh, Queequeg, Testego, and uh, Dago the harpooners, and Ishmael is the young sailor who narrates the story. When the crew uh, signed aboard the Pequod, they believed the voyage would be a business venture. However, they finally, you know, learned that it's Ahab who um, has the real purpose to seek revenge against Moby Dick. From the Quarter Deck one morning, shortly after breakfast, Ahab, as was his wont, ascended the cabin gangway to the deck. There most sea captains usually walk in that hour as country gentlemen after the same meal make a few turns in the garden. Soon his steady ivory stride was heard as to and fro he paced his old rounds upon the planks too familiar to his tread, that they were all over dented, like geological stones, with the peculiar mark of his walk. Did you fixly gaze too upon the ribbed and dented brow? There also you would see still stranger footprints, the footprints of his one unsleeping, ever pacing thought. So right here, he's basically, um, Ishmael's basically comparing the, you know, he has sort of, um, you know, just like you would see in, in, in cartoons or old, like, you know, maybe Pirates of the Caribbean, this uh, wooden leg that um, he has in place of where Moby Dick took the first leg off. And so when he walks, he's, he's kind of making indentions in the wood, and that's what he's talking about there. And then he goes to compare that to the, the lines and the the indentions in his uh, face and his and his brow, meaning like his forehead, as he's thinking. But on the occasion in question, those dents look deeper. Even as his nervous step that morning left a deeper mark, and so full of his thought was Ahab that every uniform turn that he made now. At the mainmast and now at the binnacle. And the binnacle is um, sort of like the little um, place that the ship's compass would be. You can almost see that thought turn in him as he turned and paced in him as he paced, so completely ass assessing him, indeed, that it all but seemed the inward mold of every outer movement. Die, marking flask, whispered Stubb. The chick that that's him pecks the shell will soon be out. So what he what um, Stubbs talking about here is when he says the chick um, that's in him pecks the shell will soon be out. So just like a chicken coming out of a shell, whatever's bothering him will soon come out. The hours wore on. Ahab now shut up within his cabin and then paced the deck with the same intense bigotry of purpose. In his aspect. It drew near the close of day. Suddenly he came to halt. The bulwarks and the inserting his bone leg to the auger hole there. And with one hand grasping at a shroud, he ordered Starbuck to send everybody aft. Sir, said the mate, astonished at the order, seldom or never given on a ship except in some extraordinary case. Send everybody aft, repeated Ahab. Mastheads, here, come down. When the entire ship's company were assembled, and with curious, not wholly unapprehensive faces, were eyeing him, for he looked 
not unlike the weather horizon, which uh, when a storm is coming up, Ahab, after rapidly glancing over the bulk wards and then darting his eyes among the crew, started from his standpoint. And as thought not a soul were nigh him, resumed his heavy turns upon the deck. With bent head and half slouched, he continued to pace, unmindful of the wondering whispering that continued to, uh, I'm sorry, uh, um, wondering whispering among the men. Till Stubb continuously whispered to Flack that Ahab must have summoned them there for the purpose of witnessing a must, um, a pedestrian feat. But this did not last long. The helmet pausing, he cried, What do you do when you see a whale, men? Sing out for him, was the impulsive rejoiner from the score of uh, clubbed voices. Good, cried Ahab with a wild approval in his tones. Observing the Hartley animation into which his unexpected question had so magically thrown them. And what do you do next, men? Lower away and after him. And that tune time is is it to pull him in? And what time is it to pull him in? A dead well or a stove boat? Born more strangely and fiercely glad approving grew the countenance of the old man at every shout, while the mariners began to gaze curiously at each other, as if marveling now. It was they themselves becoming so excited that such seemingly purposeless questions. But they were all eagerness again, as Ahab now, half revolving in his pivot hole, with one hand reaching high up a shroud and tightly, almost convulsively grasping it addressing them th thus all ye mass headers have before now heard me give orders about a white whale look ye do you see the spanish ounce of gold holding up a broad coin to the sun this is a sixteen dollar piece men you see it mr starbuck hand me the top mall while the mate was getting the hammer ahab without speaking was slowly rubbing the gold piece against the skirt of his jacket as if to heighten its luster, and without using any words, was meanwhile slowly humming to himself, producing a sound so strangely muffled and inarticulate that it seemed the mechanical humming of the wheels of his vitality in him. Receiving the top maul from Starbuck, he advanced towards the main mast with a hammer uplifting in one hand, exhibiting the gold with the other, and with a high raise of a voice exclaiming, Whosoever of ye raises me a white-headed well with a wrinkled brow and a crooked jaw, whosoever of ye raise me with a white-headed well with three holes punctured in him in his uh, starboard fluke, look ye, whosoever ye raises me with the same white well, he shall have this ounce of my boys. Huzza, huzza, cried the seamen, as with swinging tarpaulins, uh, tarpaulins they hailed the act of uh, nailing the gold to the mast. It's a white whale, I say, resumed Ahab, as he threw down the top maul a white whale. Skim your eyes for him, men. Look sharp for the white, for white water. If you s see but a bubble, sing out. All this while Tashtego and Dago and Quakeweg had looked on with even more intense interest and surprise than the rest. And at the mention of the wrinkled brow and the crooked jaw, they had um, started as if each was separately touched by some specific recollection. Captain Ahab, said Tashtego, that white whale must be the same some call Moby Dick. Moby Dick? shouted Ahab. 
Do ye know the white well, then, Tash? Does he faint tell? A little curious, sir. Before he goes down, said the uh, gay header deliberately. And that's a curious spout, too, said Dago. Very bushy. Even a uh, permanently and mighty quick, Captain Ahab. And we have one, two, three. Oh, good many from him. Hi, too, Captain, cried Quickwig disjointly. All whisk, t uh, bet whisk like him, him, faltering toward the word and screwing with his head around and around as though it mocked him a, a, a bottle, like him, him. Corkscrew, cried Ahab. Ye Queequeg and the harpoons lie all twisted and wretched him, eh? Dago, this spout is a big one, like a whole shock of wheat, and white as a pile of our Nantucket wool after the great annual sheep hearing. Eh, Tashigo, and he, he faintles and like a split jib and qual, death and devil's men. It is Moby Dick ye have seen. Moby Dick, Moby Dick! Captain Ahab, said Starbuck. Who, with stub and flask, has thus far been eyeing with this superior with uh, um, increasing surprise, but last seemed struck with the thought of which somewhat explained all in wonder. Captain Ahab, I've heard of Moby, Bi Moby Dick. It is not Moby Dick that took, is it not Moby Dick that took thy leg? Who told ye that, cried Ahab, then pausing. Aye, Starbuck. I, my heartless all around. It was Moby Dick This dismasted me. Moby Dick that brought me to this dead slump I stand on now. I, I, he shouted with a terrific loud animal sob like that of a heart-stricken moose. A, a, it was that accursed white whale that raised me, made me a poor pegged lubber. For him, for me forever, and a day. Then tossing both arms with measureless imprecations, uh, he shouted, Ay, ay, I'll chase him around Good Hope, and round the Horn, and round the Norway Malstorm, around the Predictions Flames before I give up. And this is what you shipped for men, to chase that white whale on both sides of land and all over the sides of the earth till he spouts black blood and rolls fin out. What say ye men? Will ye slice hands on it now? I think you do look brave. Aye, aye, shouted the harpooners and the seamen running closer to the excited old man. Sharp eye for the white whale, a sharp lance for Moby Dick. 